with Andy Hadfield, founder of Real Time Wine and winner of the Ignite Award. Andy, do you want to tell us a little bit more about Real Time Wine? Yeah, sure. So, Real Time Wine does two things essentially. One is it tries to combat the fact that wine reviews are terrible and they use a whole bunch of, uh, of words that people don't understand. And the other fact is that no one's talking to the vast majority of the wine markets that buy their wine in a supermarket. You know, it's, it's amazing. The, the wine farms and the big wine brands, they're all obsessed with the top 25% of the market, the wine snobs who use that kind of language. Um, so it's Yelp for retail reviews, okay. um, consumer generated reviews, easy to understand language. Uh, and then the concept pitch, and that was what was interesting about the fact that we won, is that it's, it's not a developed product, it's a, it's a fancy blog at the moment. But the concept pitch is, it, it'll add in barcode scanning, uh, smartphone apps, um, nice game layer to incentivize participation, and a whole bunch of other cool, cool things. And one of, the, one of the things that you said to me was that um, most of the reviews or a certain percentage of the reviews were coming from users, is that correct? Yeah, so currently on the, on the blog on steroids, we have um, a, well over 700 wine reviews. Uh, we have eight writers, including myself, and 25% of those reviews are from consumers outside of those eight writers. So just normal people who drink wine. So there is an invitation for normal people to write reviews. Well, that's, that, that's one of the things. Hey? Everyone can be a reviewer. Yeah. You don't need a wine course. You don't need a wine certificate. Uh, you just get on and type something up in 140 characters. Excellent. I love that. Yeah. Um, Andy, congratulations on winning the award. What does Thank that mean you. to you? I, I like the attention. Um, <laughs> well, I've always liked attention. But um, we know. It's, it's, <laughs> I need attention to get developers. Um, and that's why I like it. it. It's a strange case because I'm, you know, you always need a hustler and a hacker in these kind of startup relationships. And I've, went, I've always been a hustler without the hacker. I need to find my hacker. I need to marry my hacker. Um, <laughs> you need a hacker in your pocket. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. An equity relatable hacker is absolutely fine. Um, but I think there's a lot of me's out there. I think there's a lot of business guys with really good ideas that have just never been able to crack the developer networks. Because mm. um, the startups you hear about, the startups that you read about, they're all when a hustler has found a hacker and there's this partnership going on and, and they get it going. Um, but if you haven't found that development partner, I don't know when you last looked, but developers aren't easy to find these days. Yeah, no, um, it becomes a much more tricky proposition. So hopefully this kind of visibility is just going to help find that partner. That partner, and also there's the attraction of getting involved, as you say, on an equity level. So, of course, I, I, that's the only way it works. Yeah. You know, you've got to have a partner with skin in the game. Yeah. Um, so, I'm delighted to give away equity to someone who can come in and be a tech lead on this project. Otherwise, it, it remains a blog on steroids. Um, so, so, this video might actually be a little recruitment drive. It, it, it's always a recruitment drive. <laughs> and you just can I smile nicely? Yes. <laughs> Just to finish up a little about Tech for Africa, what is your perspective on it and where do you see it going in the future? So, it's expensive. Um, and it's expensive because it costs a bomb to put these kind of things together. But the problem with being expensive is that you don't get as many people as you could. The pro of being expensive is that the quality of people here is just phenomenal. I mean, I've always said that there are only two conferences that I think are worth going to in this country. One is the Discovery Leadership Summit and one is Tech for Africa. Um, so, I think the vibe is amazing. I'm meeting some, some really incredible people here and that's, that's the filter of it being expensive. Um, but if it's to grow, and I'd love to see Tech for Africa become the South by Southwest of Africa. I really would. Um, and I, I think it can. I think you've got your early adopters now, the guys that have shelled out to come here, mm. and you use that to spread um, and just get more people and more people. I think, I think uh, Gareth might even give you a big hug for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I support Gareth 110%. And um, um, what he's doing is amazing. Thank you for your time and congratulations again. Thank Good you. Good on you.